yeah, on time. Welcome everyone um, to this um, LCN, joint LCN Department of Materials Study Hub, uh, where we have the pleasure of welcoming uh, Professor Ron uh, Naaman, who's a professor in the Department of Chemical and um, Biological Physics at the Weizmann Institute in Israel. Um, so Professor Naaman um, earned his BSc from the Ben Gurion University um, of the Negev and his PhD in um, 1978 from the Weizmann Institute of Science. Uh, then he spent uh, some time in the US and uh, uh, had the great idea of spending time at Stanford University in California, which was, uh, sounds delightful, uh, and then Harvard um, after that. Um, then you um, came back to uh, the Weizmann Institute in the Department of Isotope Research, uh, which has become uh, the Department of Chemical Physics. And um, he is visiting uh, as uh, well, he's, he's working also closely with uh, Matt Fischer and, and Jess Wade. And uh, so thank you very much for um, organizing and, and, and making sure that, uh, that Ron joins, joins our um, LCN seminar series. So thank you very much. I'll pass on to Jess for the final word on, on Ron before, uh, before the start of this talk. Yes, just to say um, that, so lots of people here, Ron's very big for coming up with or inventing or discovering the CIS effect. So Ron discovered the CIS effect together with with World Bank and, and has gone on to research it for the past 20 years. So obviously that's quite huge for all of us. And in um, 2023, amongst Ron's many medals and honors and awards was awarded the Chirality Medal um, for, for discovering the CIS effect. So it's a huge privilege to have him here and to have him here this year when you won this big prize. So thank you for coming. Um, and we've already interrogated you a lot, but we look forward to learning more during this lecture. All right, thank you. So, pleasure to be here, and I want to tell you part of our work on the current use of selectivity effect. Yeah. And the uh, Please, since we are a sort of a compact audience, and uh, if there are any questions, don't hesitate to ask during my talk. Don't wait for them. And I'm saying, because as you realize, and also from the, same, from the name of my department, uh, the work is very interdisciplinary, and it covers both biology, chemistry, and physics, and so, I assume that not everybody can follow all fields, uh, and therefore, if you have questions, or am I, if I'm using words that you don't understand, don't hesitate to stop me. Okay. So uh, something is wrong with the microphone. The microphone. Not really. <laughs> no. no.
and we know when we do something scared, it means that it's important. However, it will be delayed the other thing to any important function, besides function. I will not be able to answer all the questions that I'm posing now, but in our search we try to cover them. So the, the chirality that I want to speak about is structure, of course, but I will show you that from the structure it means that the, this kind of the very special properties coming end to end with the structure. The other player in here are the Eton spin. And that's another, I would say, element that things tend to forget about in the First of all, chemists and physics think that speeds are important only in the case of alternative points. And since most molecules, most stories, uh, in their second state, when the all electrons are parallel. The spin was not considered as the repulsive parameter in their orbit. The other reason is that even in cases where there is unpaired electron, and this is something that they prepare people to share the law, the spin is usually very weakly. Come into the molecular world. And therefore, people didn't think that controlling spin alignment by itself can affect chemistry. The exception of photoprocessors, process association, and this is known that if the molecule is in signal of different state on the different products. But even there, we must speak about the alignment of the spin relative to the collateral or relative to the collateral But we speak about the rotation of the spin relative to another spin. And we don't know the thing that we don't know how the spins are related to the collateral of So, therefore, spin was not considered an important parameter. What I'm going to show you the cardinal to place all the assumptions that I just very bad. No, 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 no. You might have to stand closer to the left. Microphone connecting to this is not better. Is it maybe you have to stand closer because it's the microphone is going through here? I see, I see. I see. So if you just stand closer to here, sorry to do oh, that. Yeah. minimize that. It is much better. It's much better if you stand here. Now it's better? Yeah. We'll just stand off them, but you stand closer to here. Ah, okay. Okay, fine. At the end of the talk, it will be perfect. So, okay, so I'm going to show you now that car molecules really break all the assumptions I just mentioned. So, what are car molecules? Here I give a simple hint of chirality. In principle, car molecules means that the electron is going. In a asymmetric way in the molecule. The potential in car molecules doesn't matter what is the secondary structure of the molecule, is always helical. That's something people tend to forget. Even if you have a single carbon asymmetric carbon, if you look on the electrostatic potential of four different groups around this carbon, it makes an helical potential. So any reality car molecules means helical potential. That's very important to appreciate. But what it means, helical potential, 
Why is it important? It's important because think about it, the electron moving, it has to change direction. How electron can change direction? Can change direction only by exchanging momentum with the molecule. Otherwise, it cannot change direction. So it means that not like linear motion for molecule, where the electron can go without sharing momentum with the, with the molecule, in time molecules, by definition, the motion of the molecule through the potential requires exchanging momentum. That's something that chemists and physicists are not used to. Now, in solids, it's very easy to understand how the electron can show momentum. There are delocalized electrons in the band. So the electron that's moving in the power potential in solids will transfer momentum to the, to the electrons in the band. And that's all what will happen. It will be very efficient. And that's the end of the story. Other in molecule or insulator, the situation is much more complex because now the electrons are localized. If the electrons localize, changing momentum of an electron requires a lot of energy. So the electron cannot transfer, let's say, 20 million electron volt, 100 million electron volt, even not one electron volt to other electrons because they, these electrons have no states there. So the only thing that the electron can do in this case is transferring momentum to low frequency vibrations. So that's something that, again, both chemists and physicists are not used to think about. So now I'm going to describe to you how we prove it. So here is a simple system. We make a sandwich structure. We have gold, we have car molecules here. Here on top, we have nickel electron. And we measure the car as function of the magnetic field applying on the system. The magnetic field is applied perpendicular to the surfaces here. And what we get is the spin polarization because the spin polarization is defined the current with the, when the magnet is one direction minus the current for the opposite direction of the magnet over the sun. And here you see the values, and we measure them as function of temperature. And it's a big surprise because what we see here that the, as the temperature rises, the spin polarization rises also. And that's something very non-intuitive for people working with synthonics. In synthonics, typically we think that if we want to get good spin polarization, we have to lower the temperature. Here we see increasing of the spin polarization with temperature, and here you see the Arrhenius plot, and in the Arrhenius plot you see that from low temperature, the polarization decreases slightly, but then it takes off all the way when we get warm. Now, interestingly enough, there is a theory by Jonas Franson from Sweden, and the theory gets it precisely by assuming that the electron and vibration of the increase of freedom are coupled. And I'm not going to discuss the old theory, but it's really important to understand that what we see here, that the vibration motion is responsible to the ability of the electron to go through the system, just as I told you. So clearly here, we saw the effect of vibration, and you may conclude we want to have high temperature. So it's not so simple. It's another molecule. It was studied by group in China. The paper was just submitted. And you see these molecules 
are really interesting because they are higher without any asymmetrical. Another interesting thing here, you realize that in this structure, we have groups here that are conjugated groups. So we have delocalized electrons in the system. And now we measure the spin polarization through them. And true enough, we see beautiful spin polarization. You see here a measurement done by magnetic contact AFM. So you see here the magnetic contact, in this case, the, the tip was magnetic. And you see that we measure the current. So these molecules, when the tip is magnetized either one way or another way, and typically this measurement is very difficult, but here because of the last spin polarization, which is on the order of 75%, we get beautiful spin resolved ID curves. So that's nice, but that's not surprising except one, Point, that the current we get here is on the order of 400 nanom amp, while before the current we saw in any other car molecules was on the order of 2 to 3 nanom amp. So we see here two order of magnitude enhancement in the current compared to other cases. So what's going on here? To do it, we did also here temperature-dependent studies. And what we find here, to our surprise, that there is almost no temperature dependence. There's slight temperature dependence, but almost no temperature dependence. Now, how can we explain it? We can explain it by the fact that here, electrons can share momentum with the delocalized electron in the conjugated system. And sure enough, here's the theory that performed, and you will see uh, that we get high spin polarization, assuming electron electron interaction. So here we see that because we have electrons that can absorb momentum, the production is enhanced. And there is almost no temperature dependent because the vibration don't play, play an important role. But you have to realize here, what both ex experiments point is that the electron that's moving through the system, the spin, is coupled to the molecular foil. Both in the case of the vibration, there is coupling to the molecular foil, and in the case of the electrons that are sitting on the molecule, the electron is coupled to the molecular frame. So not like a regular spin that we know that, as I mentioned, is not coupled to molecular frame. In the case of this cis effect, current to spin effect, the electron is coupled to the molecular frame. So the take home message from what I just told you is that the cis effect in both cases works well at room temperature. That's why, and I will not show it here because I was asked not to show too much biology here, so I don't do it, but uh, that's why the cis effect playing an important role in biology. And it's important to appreciate that spin is coupled to the molecular frame, and we will discuss it again soon. Now I'll switch to the issue of what molecular properties really make the spin polarization. And here I feel like I came just to the right place because I'm going to discuss with you the relation between optical activity and the cis effect. So the first experiment that was done quite long ago, almost two years, it's an experiment done together with a group of Bert Meyer from Eindhoven. And there, Bert is an expert in making these supermolecular structures that are chiral. And they are chiral 
because these porphyrins have side groups that are carved. So if you put here a group that is left or right, that affects the chirality of the system. And if you don't put any of any kind of group here, you get random structure. You don't know if it will be left or right. And these molecules make wires that are quite long, and they, they are built from many molecules. No, it's not a single molecule wire, but it's a bundle of many molecules. Okay, so we put them on the surface, and you see here all this wire on the surface, and we come with an AFM. Here it's the tip is not magnetic, the substrate is magnetic, so it's a simple experiment. And here you see the height of the wire. So we measure actually the spin transform perpendicular to the long axis of the wire. And you see the long axis is typically between 15 to 20 nanometers, so it's quite thick and composed of many molecules. And here are the results for, with different type of substitutes on the, on the molecule. And you realize that we get really large spin polarization and it gets up to 90% spin polarization. It's really very good spin polarization. But now we go another step and we try to check how it relates to the optical activity. So. The group of Bert Meyer is doing something that some supermolecular structure very often. They use what's called the surgeon soldier effect. And for those of you that are not familiar, the idea is that you take archaic molecules, they are the soldiers, and you dope them with car molecules that are the surgeon. And what you find, here you see the CD as a function of the surgeon percentage, that as you increase, in the beginning, you increase the the number of the car molecules, you see the CD increases linearly, but then you get amplification. So this amplification indicates that the car molecule induce chirality on the whole structure. Even so the full structure is not car. So we have this beautiful CD. This experiment was done in Eidhoven. We didn't know about it. But they gave us the molecules and asked us to measure the spin polarization. And that's what we got from spin polarization. So you see, it's quite amazing. It follows really amazingly well the ch change in the CD spectrum. And that was a firm uh, proof that indeed there is a relation between spin polarization and CIS. That was observed also by the group of the Voltec and some other experiments. But then the question was, okay, can we take it really as is? And for this, we went and did experiment with the group of Oregidron from the Hebrew University. He synthesized, his group synthesized these molecules. And these molecules are quite interesting molecules because they have three car centers and you see the antocin group here. That's a group that lies on the surface when you put it on the surface. And when you look on the spectrum, you see the following. If you take in solution, you see very nicely the CD spectrum of the two enantiomer. Either all carbons are left or all carbons are right. When we put it on insulator, we get similar nice symmetric structure. However, when we put it on board substrate, you realize the two enantiomer give the same chirality, the same sign of the Compton peak. So what's going on here, together with a, a theory done by the group of Igor Shapiro, we, can, we found the explanation. What happened when you put molecules on a metal? All the transition diaper moments parallel to the metal are cancelled because of the image charge. Here, when you calculate it, you find that what is left is one component out of plane, 
it has the same sign, but the magnitude is slightly different for the two enantiomers. And that's exactly what we see here in the CD spectrum. So that's nice. So we understand this, but what I told you just now, it's not big discovery. People know about this constellation of the transition type of moving. But now the question what happened is the seed. So you realize that on gold, we get the spin polarization to be the same with the same sign for the to an antimer. The magnitude of spin polarization is slightly different as the CD, but the sign is the same. And then when we put it on ITO, which is not a good conductor, doesn't have a doesn't cancel completely the transition dipole moment parallel to the surface, we get indeed the opposite means, and you see the opposite sign of the spin polarization. So the, here's something quite amazing. We cancel the transition dipole moment because of outside factor, because of the environment, but that affects the spin polarization. So that was, for me, a very strong indication that indeed the collaborative behavior of the molecule, optical activity is not nothing more than the anisotropic plausibility of the molecule. And the anisotropic plausibility of the molecule and the cis effect, the spin polarization, are strongly related. So, however, here you really know that optical activity has two components. One is the transition, electronic transition dipole moment, and the other one is the magnetic transition dipole. So the question is, how, which one of them is dominant? So you see here something very interesting. Here is the CD spectrum, and you realize that for this, for this molecule, the CD intensity is almost twice as large as for this molecule. So there is a very different CD in terms of intensity. However, the spin polarization we measured for both of them is basically the same. So what is wrong here? What is, the, what is the wrong is that not the CD spectrum matter, but the G factor, the anisotropic parameter. And the anisotropic parameter for these two molecules is identical. So we now know that the anisotropic parameter, which is Basically, the magnetic part of the CD, if you wish. This is the, what controls also our induced spin selectivity. Okay. So I think now we have a good insight on the mechanism of the cis effect. I don't want to bother you with the theory. But it really means that when electrons are moving through the molecule, it polarizes the molecule. And the, when molecules get polarized using this electron, there is a magnetic moment. This magnetic moment acts on the spin. That's not a big surprise. So it's not a single electron acting on the spin. It's all the cloud of the electrons of the molecules are responsible for it. And that tells us that any theory that tries to spend the spin without this as it is, without including electron electron interaction or many electron interaction is not relevant. That's really important. Okay. Now we switch gear and we go ask ourselves what is the when we apply electric field on the power molecule. And here an experiment that was done with a group of Yossi Peltier from the University. 
And the experiment is amazingly simple. There is a ferromagnetic substrate. It's a thin film of nickel. On top of which, we pattern with adsorbed molecule, car molecules, and this oligopeptides, either L or D. Now, I want to call your attention to something very interesting. Uh, you see here, the, the squares are beautiful, right? Here, they are not so beautiful. Anybody has an idea why? It's not the student. It's not the fault of the student, yeah. Is this this color? No. No. The source of the L oligopeptide are natural amino acid. And they are 100% pure. The D oligopeptides are synthesized artificially. And they are cleaned. And they are never cleaned to the same purity like the natural amino acid. So that's something that it's quite amazing to see. That's a good demonstration. Okay. But now we came with a magnetic tip of an AFM, and we didn't measure current. What we measure here is a magnetic force. So you realize here the magnetic moment is up, here the magnetic moment is down. So what happened here? We absorbed chiral molecules on a substrate that was not magnetized, namely the domains randomly oriented. The car molecules induce magnetization, namely alignment of the spin of the ferromagnet. And view it here. The car molecules is approaching the surface. When the molecule is approaching, approaching the surface, there is charge rearrangement in the molecule because of the difference in the electrochemical potential between the molecule and the substance. So there is charge per rearrangement, namely dipole moment is formed. But because charge is moving, in this case, from here to here, the charge that moves is spin polarized. So there is a specific spin here. It's a transient effect. It's not permanent. But when the molecule comes to the surface, it has spin polarization. Now, this spin polarization, this spin interacts with the spin of the ferromagnet. And of course, it prefers that this spin will be opposite the this spin, then the molecule can bind. So the chemical binding induces spin flipping in the substrate. If you think about the free energy of the system, it's obvious. The system, it's better to absorb, and but the barrier for absorption is the wrong spin in this case. Okay? So we see here several things that are important. One, when you charge polarized car molecules, there is a transient spin polarization. This transient spin polarization can become permanent if you have something that holds it, like ferromagnetic substance. The second important thing is, and that's something that relates now to something that people like to speak about it, entanglement of spins. You know, singlet, it's entangled state. Namely, in the regular molecule, when you polarize regular molecule, you can't say which spin is going where because there is equal probability to spin alpha or spin beta to come. No, that's not the case in chiral molecules. In chiral molecules, because of the chirality, you know which spin is going. And it's like measurement. Hence, we break the entanglement. So now we have the, we know which spin is here and we broke the entanglement. That's not a regular singlet anymore because I know which spin is here and which spin is here, there. So in that sense, car molecules are very special. They really provide you... you have a question? Yeah. Please. You were saying the effect is transient. Are you applying a constant voltage? What? Yeah. No voltage. No voltage. 
yeah, you put you basically drop put a drop on the surface and it happens. And people have to appreciate when two materials are in contact, there is the potential, and the potential is quite large. That's enough to do everything. Okay, so remember that chiral molecules really break break the entanglement. So that's basically one thing that I want to say. The second thing is that again we see here that the L spin is coupled to the molecular frame and Yosti group, the supertil group in the Ebola University, they actually observe what happens in this function of time. And if the molecules slide down, the magnetization of the surface starts to move with it. So the spin is strongly coupled to the molecular frame. Now, we can use it for a device that's related to things that I discussed this morning here. And we can put a, a gallium arsenide, aluminum gallium arsenide a wafer. That is, it has two d electron gas, namely the delocalized electrons here in this layer here. Now we are top on top car molecules. On the top of it, we put gate. Actually, there is no current flowing here. We have only the, the gate is actually insulated from the molecule, so we have only potential. Now, when we apply voltage, we inject spins into the system. And the question what happened then? Uh, this, as I said, we spend we inject spins into the system, and these spins interact now through the two D electron gas with each other. And therefore, if we want to see how it looks, we have here a whole device. Namely, we have here source and drain here, and from this side, two whole electrons. A electrodes, and now when we apply the voltage, we can measure if there is whole potential. You know, whole potential exists typically only if you have magnetic field. But here we don't have magnetic field. And what we see that we get for for the L molecule, we depend we get the voltage. If we have acar molecules, we get no whole potential. And we switch the, the gate, we get the opposite potential. So we have now a way to magnetize the gallium arsenide, aluminum gallium arsenide, using simple potential after acting on the gate. Yeah. Now, we get it. In a second, you'll see something interesting. I want to show you in a second. I will. Uh, we can put here a chiral polymer. That's what we did with the group from Kanazawa. That's chiral polymer. And we have it L and D. And I want, we did the same experiment. And you see what we get here. With one chirality, we get negative potential. With the opposite chirality, we get positive potential. I answer the question. Good. So you see here, and here you see the function of voltage. And you see that the sign is opposite. So clearly, we have a way to induce magnetization without magnet as a result of having our molecule. Okay, question here, because I dropped you many concepts to impress you, but uh, let's see. I hope you, you will be able to follow me. Okay, the next thing I want to describe to you, I, I must say, I, I want you to appreciate it. With these car molecules, it looks to us all the time, They're like we make miracles. Because everything that you saw, if you would ask us 10 years ago, if that's what we will see, we said, no way. 
you know, when the students came to me first time that he saw this issue, and he showed me the result, I told him, look, there is no such physics. And the poor guy worked for another two years repeating all the experiments to convince me that there is such things. And that's true. I mean, we really explore the religion and physics or chemistry theories that people didn't think that they exist. Okay, so here we have crystal. And the crystals are dull crystals of cobalt phenyl alanine made for us by a group of Udi Gazit from the Tel Aviv University. And you see the, these crystals, they are beautiful. You can get the L or D, of course, and you get the CD, and everything looks really beautiful. And what is nice here, you can calculate everything about them, and it's, it's nice. So there is a copper here. That's very important. Copper, as you know, copper plus two is under the Okay, so here, what you see here is the IV curves that we saw, and we see very nice <coughs> uh, spin polarization here. But when we look with the squid on the effect of magnetic field, we realize something which is crazy again. At room temperature, we get very nice hysteresis, Cooling down, the stars disappear. That's counterintuitive completely. Because usually we would say, cooling down, the material, the stars disappear. And here you see the, the stars is the coercive field as a function of temperature, and you see it's going up to about 150K, and then it remains constant. So the question is, what's going on here? Okay, so think about the following situation. We have copper. Copper is a magnetic, we all know. But the copper is in high potential. And that's extremely important. What it means, copper potential? It means, if you want to make it simple, that the cavity of the copper is <coughs> unusable. Because what it sees from the left is different from the right, but it sees on the form different from the back. That is what it means. So at low temperature, this poor copper lies in the ground state. In ground state, even if the potential is asymmetric, it looks in good approximation like a symmetric. However, when you go up, the copper is moving towards the side, especially this anharmonic potential, and therefore it feels the environment. So the copper plus now polarize the more charge polarize the car molecules in the crystal. As I told you, the car molecules in the crystals, when they are charge polarized, they are also spin polarized. So there is a spin spin interaction between the copper. And the, and the crystal. When we calculate it, what you see that the copper builds actually thin oriented layers in the system at high temperature. So the, the motion of the copper within its cage, because of the anisotropy of the G factor of the, of the copper creates the magnetization. And we can see by PR2, I'm not going to elaborate it. And that effect is actually known in condensed metal physics. And what is the first time that it's shown in organic materials. So, you know, typically people work very hard to find magnetism in. And molecules, and typically you need really low temperature in order to see it. I think the record is 70k or something like this. And there is this interaction between the carbon ions and the molecules is too. 
Here we solve the problem. The current molecules provide this electron to keep it there, to increase the exchange. So we have, in a sense, if you want to look here, we have indirect exchange between two couples, indirect exchange through the, through the crystal. And so that is nicely observed. And then we can use this in order to make a device. And here it's a Carl spin transistor made with the same, with the same type of crystals. And I'm not going to in many details, but you see we can use the same crystal to see both a interesting a IV curve with it's like a restore and also whole voltage. So we have a really multiple st stage <laughs> a transistor. That's done with with a physics. Now I want to switch very briefly and speak about chemistry. So the question is, okay, and then we can we use it for chemistry? And we, we believe that we can, and that's the work that we did. So basically the idea is, is to take alkyl monomer and to form chyl polymer. This is a non reaction. And typically when you do it in the lab, you get a certain picture. So what we did, we used, this, we used electrochemistry to reduce the polymer, the monomer to form polymer, and we used magnetic electrons. So when the electron is magnetized in one direction, you see the CD increases. When it magnetized in the opposite direction, you see the CD decreases. So you can form one nanotubule or another nanotubule, depending on the spin of the electron inject for reducing the monomer. It's really interesting. We get, here we can get, before, here because we have aromatic group, we can get by NMR the absolute nanotubule uh, uh, excess, and it's 65% without any optimization. And the paper was published, so you can see. So how it works, why, why it works. So I can give you a simple picture. We have a monomer lying on the surface. Now the second monomer comes. It can form a total transition state. So it can be one way or the opposite way. Now, electron is spin polarized. So if the, if the electron is spin polarized, for one spin, it's easier for the electron to go this way. For the other spin, it's easier to go this way. If you want to think about it, it's very much, and I have this example already this morning, it's very much like throwing a frisbee on the wall. If you want, you throw the frisbee on the right wall, it will go forward if it's rotated clockwise. If it was rotated counterclockwise, it will deflect back. If we throw it on the left wall, the opposite will be true. So think about the, this electron will spin like the free spin. If it's going in one direction, the spin will enhance forward spin. If you go the opposite direction, the opposite spin will be forward spin. And basically, actually, that's something very well known in physics is the most general. Is a lot more is a device in which by scattering electrons from gold surface you can separate their spin and still basically on the same process. Okay, so I will summarize. A, you know, in the beginning, car molecules were assumed to be only structural things. There were some small, some exceptions in which people realized that they 
special optical, of course, and some magnetical properties. And now with the CIS, we have many, many, many applications. And among them, we use it for an anti-specific interaction, an anti-specific interaction, an anti-separation. I didn't discuss it, but we use magnetic surfaces to separate uh, our molecules either by crystallization or by adsorption. That's a subject that relates strongly to biology, controlling multiple electrons reaction. You know, biology, the action with oxygen are very important. Oxygen, oxygen is a treatment, the product of the reduction of oxygen, the, the respiration system, for example. The products are all similar, so it's forbidden to teach how it happens to show that if you use spin polarized electron for the reduction, you can overcome this barrier because two strings that are coming that are in parallel to each other are like this. And that's enhanced and explains respiration, but it also enhanced uh, hydrogen production, water splitting, and so on. So there are many. Issue. Uh, spin selective chemistry, I gave one example. We have published several other. And spintonic applications, I also gave one example. And there are many more examples. And these are the people that did the work. That's my current group. They are people that were in the group in the past. And of course, they are the ones that did the work, as you know. And thank you very much. Thanks so much. Um, thank you. That was fantastic. If people online want to type questions, Andrew could read them out. Um, but does anyone in the room have a question? I can start with one. Yeah. Um, so you show the optical activity relationship with the spin polarization. Obviously, in those scenarios, your optical activity is still relatively modest. It's still a few hundred milli degrees, maybe. If you go to systems where you then have thousands of Milli degrees, you know, if you've got much stronger G factors like the chiral polymer system, your spin polarization is going to go to more than 100. No, it okay. cannot, okay. of course. Okay, there, there's several issues here. And, and there were, I spoke about small molecules, really small. And the reason is there is another effect that if you take electrons going through molecules or polymers, and we have results of it, uh, they get scattered. There is scattering in the polymer, and the scattering in the polymer reduces the spin polarization. So we saw with polymers, car polymers, up to 100 nanometer, we saw increase in the spin polarization, mm -hmm. but it was not monotonic increase. It started to level off. And I assume that in some case, if we have such polymer like the one I mentioned, it will level off and will remain constant. It will, no, it will not go beyond it. Because of the scattering inside the system. So the optical, it's not simply, optical activity isn't enough to describe what's going on. There's also the scattering. But if you go beyond the single molecule level, let's call it, then you need to take into account scattering. Okay. Mark. Um, going back to your effect device without a magnetic field, I'm just trying to understand what I call the dynamics. How quickly, on, on the horizontal scale, I think I saw microseconds or something. Yeah. Like that. How quick does the effect? Okay. Well, the effect depends on the capacity. Yeah. Okay, it's the charge. The capacitance of the system. That is what we find. So it's just the gate charging up. That's, that's, that's what's limiting the dynamics. But we, we together with your system, we got to about 30 megahertz. But that was still large size compared to what's known in electronics. And now we want to collaborate with the professionals to make really small devices and see if we can get into the above 100 megahertz and so on. Okay. So it can be used as a transistor because it's a voltage, it's yeah. affecting the voltage, right? Yeah. Did you have a question, Sandy? <laughs> Max, 
I'm thinking about the consequences for OED beans and the global data flight, which is really one that's um, if you've got lots of charges uh, traveling through your, your current system that are spin up and spin down predominantly, aren't you going to get more triplets? So no, no, okay, okay. It's a very good question because, again, of course, you can mention many people talk about it. There's something very interesting to come out of that. If you aim the whole end, the energy of the core are going to the opposite direction. So, if sharp separation is very good, if the combination can be only on the stupid surface. Not me on the thing, and people start to explore. This was not explored me. I think we don't have yet, and I know we are trying to study other people. We don't have yet the, the ski hard doing a physical. So, in principle, it's fantastic for all of because you can use the computers. So, clearly, how to make it. You're finishing using trap states. So, if your material that is whatever you're running currently, you use some trap state converter. But the electrons recombine along the way. Okay, well, this is the idea. Now I'm not on top of everything because there are many groups in the world that are working on it. Also, in parallel sites. And uh, people see the other things, but it's not there. Okay. Yeah, I have a question on the on the copper um, systems. So, the so the 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 Um, and, um, and, and just a moment, just um, come from the copper as well. Is it? It, it is the copper. Yeah. It's basically, if you like, there is indirect exchange the way it is not easy. So, this indirect exchange with the copper through the the system. Is there a way, uh, depending on the No, that's pretty. No, not, not. I think you think how to do it. Uh, also, it doesn't matter if it's LD, by the way. But I don't ask him how to do anti-dominant. If it doesn't work, I don't know how to do it. Do you think that the it's it's not the it's the 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 Andrew, are there questions online? No. All right, Matt. Yeah. Well, I guess from the chemist side, view, one of the challenges in this area is more and more different materials and systems are emerging. You know, so the chemists would like to at least have some design on this, but there's everything from insulated biomolecules to conductive organics to perovskites now to twisted. Tellurium wires, everything be available for us. It's just, I mean, this, this, that's a broad question, but do you have any kind of guidance on, you know, where, where, you, where you have to be careful of assigning your know, understanding to which systems or best? Oh, yes, one question that you don't have to answer yet. How would it work in the the scripting length is very short. And as a result, all this polarization that I'm speaking about is not really doing anymore. And we don't have yet really 
for Alexander. It seems in very simple, but they are in the Talmud, but they are not really the Talmud. That's the first question. And it's something about challenge, or we have the challenge, is to create a long range spin transport. By long range, I mean the microscopic track. We have now, we and others, we have evidence for microbes. So we can see spin transport of a microbe, which is unbelievable from the symbolic point of view, and it's already solves the issue or almost solved the issue of interconnected spin conics. But we don't have, well, I would like to see centimeter. And, and it's, I don't think it's, uh, it's impossible. Because the point is, as I, as I mentioned before, that when the elephant is going, it's full, it gets scattered. That's that's potential. But you still have kind of potential to realign it. So you get this sort of saturation. Are you trying to entangle across the center? What? Are you trying to entangle across the center? Entangled. You go back. You mentioned entangled steps about 20 minutes into your talk. Are you trying to, and there you're saying that the, the singlet is, is effectively entangled with the molecule because it's no longer a singlet? Yeah. It's kind of like broken. Right. Are you trying to do that at distance? Are you trying to do that across? Oh, yeah. I'm thinking about. That's because it's not microscopy. What I mean is, we are. And we can now be seen this disability. You know, even in the world, you go long enough, you lose the time. So, so the question was, but we want to see that you get the maximum civilization and the time. Here's the world. If you have a good book, I think time for one more question. Jing Yang, did you have one? Yeah, question. Um, so, how would you tentatively uh, account for the symmetry um, of the organization subject to the P? Like minus three is the same as plus three. Well, you know, it's a thing that is, I would say, and everyone who did either cares on organic models, no, because it's a condition of what? Relation of the contacts. The contacts are not symmetric. So that's one thing. The second is, is the question if you go to electron or oral, there is also not symmetric. So it's very difficult for a human system to tell you what is the origin of that symmetry. I think when they see symmetry, they are surprised. Implying, what do you actually see? Can you disentangle her or the uh, and the so, 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 that's people not to know. When you do molecules and circles, there is no such thing molecules and circles. The interface is all related. So, the only thing you can't speak anymore about molecules separation. So, we have found a way to create this issue. And I think it was very much 